Hi, Zach here. Welcome to the 14th unit of our Java's Wizards game course. Now, officially, this course is completely done, and you've built a game from scratch in Java that's pretty cool. So, I'm going to go ahead and go through the code with you right now one more time in case you didn't grasp any ideas that we actually went through before. And remember, you can always go back to the videos and rewatch them and really understand the code because I, I do go a little bit fast with these uh, videos, but it's because I'm under the assumption that you have some sort of programming background. If you're creating games in Java and this is your first game, you, I probably went a little bit too fast, and that's okay. Even if you are a beginner, you can go ahead and go back and rewatch them over and over and over again until you really understand it. But this is just going to kind of aid you, and uh, so you can really, if something I didn't explain something correctly, uh, you can watch it again. So maybe I'll explain it a little better here. All right, so we're going to start out with this game class here. This right here is our main class. This is what everything gets put through. You can see that we've actually initialized all of our uh, classes in the game. So our handler, our camera, our sprite sheet, uh, all of this stuff is initialized here. And then through the parameters through our game object, we're actually translating what we've already created from the game class. So with the tick and render methods, if you'll notice everything like handler.tick, everything, this is like the main tick method. Everything else is a sub method. So if you have a sub tick, tick method, so our, like our wizard is a, is a sub tick method, right? Um, and then it all gets transferred through here because our wizard is a game object and our game objects are handled through the handler class. Our handler.tick in our main tick method is actually the one that's transferring everything over. So if you had any confusion about our game object, let's go ahead and look in there. So the game object is basically the skeleton of all of your other objects in the game. So anything that your object wants, uh, like in your game, let's say for example you had a light source on every object. Well then, you should probably put in a method here, if not render, something of developing a light source that you can easily just create a, create a new object and automatically have like a method where you can already have some sort of presets for creating like say that light source or if every object in your game has health then let's go ahead and put in a protected int called health in here let's pass it through the parameters of our game object and then now every time we create a new game object it automatically has health so the way we do this is by using an abstract method and class, and that's just basically telling Java, hey, this is not this is not an actual class that we're going to be using, but it's it allows us to extend it. So uh, if you notice in our wizards class, every object we have extends the game object. So it's uh, essentially the game object is the parent and the wizard is the child. All right. So then in our wizard class, then we can get into the nitty gritty details of each individual object that we want. We don't want every object to perform the same functions as like we don't want a block moving around when we use the arrow keys. So here's where we actually set everything up. X, X plus equals velocity X, Y plus equals velocity Y. Um, you know, that's something that we actually use in most of our objects as well. So you could even argue that you could put in the tick method here that we always want to just start off by initializing x plus equals velocity x, y plus equals velocity y. Now when we go into the handler class here, this is where a lot of people struggle with it because they can't understand exactly what a linked list is and if they don't have a full understanding of what the game object actually does, then this handler class can be really confusing you can end up copying and pasting code, which is what I don't want to have, have happen in this course. So essentially the handler class takes an entire, let's say, array, to make it in simpler terms, an array of game objects. And then what we do is we have, like, let's say we ID game object one, game object two, game object three, game object four, right? And each one ha is its own, each one is a game object, but it's also goes into the individual classes as well. Because we extend a game object, this wizard class is considered as a game object. So when we create it in the handler class, we're actually game object temp object equals object that get i we're getting every object that extended that uh, that game object 
Here we're just adding or removing these objects to the list, which is what we do in our game class when we initialize our level. Handler.addObject, we have to add it to the list if it wants to constantly update and render our classes. So this is all just pretty simple if you actually look at it for what it is. It's nothing uh, super high tech and I like to make my tutorials and courses very uh, beginner friendly and simplistic. All right, so go ahead and uh, if you're watching this on Cody Made Simple, the download link for the source code is right below. You can download this, play around with it, edit it, do whatever you'd like with it. I also uh, will have the spritesheet.png in there as well as the wizardlevel.png that we use to create this actual game. So go ahead, have fun with it. I really hope you enjoyed this course. There will be more on the way and good luck.